sports mode, however, press that button then. <laughs> Now straight off the bat, let's talk about the color. It's called a shooting star gray matte. And in my opinion, it really matches the car. You've got these pixel lights here on the front, which look like this out of Pac-Man or something. But yeah, this car looks like it's come a hundred years too early. Oh, okay, that's probably an overstatement. Probably 20 years too early, based on the fact that it looks like it's, it's, it's come from out of the future or back to, I don't know, back, you know what I'm trying to talk about, the guy with the hair, yeah, him. <laughs> so going around to the side, we've got the Michelin Pilot Sport EV tyre, which I assume is something to do with rolling resistance and it being better suited for an EV. The alloys, I don't know if they're everyone's cup of tea, but you can see that design is very unique. Going around to the side, you can see here, we've got, let me, <laughs> let me just show you what this is. So that, that is your side mirror and it's a camera, meaning, on the inside, you have that. <laughs> you have TVs for side mirrors, literally. <laughs> and before we go inside, we also have our charging port here, which I believe you can just, nope, oh, yep, Oof. all right, mate. Yeah, you can see we've got our usual um, charging port here, which allows you to plug in slow charger and pull this out, Ugh, just like that. And then you can plug in your fast charger just in there. Going round to the rear, we can see we've got even more pixels, which look absolutely amazing. Look at that. Imagine if you saw that in front of you, you'd just be like, you don't know whether it's coming forward or backwards. <laughs> Again, with this being an EV, no exhaust tips, none of that, just a nice, clean body. You've also got reverse cam just over there, which is obviously gonna be on most cars and it's definitely on a car that costs 57,000 pound. Have a look at these handles as well. Just before we step on the inside, as soon as you unlock the car, or if you set it up to have the comfort access, as soon as you approach the car, these handles pop out. I don't know whether it's Lambo that does it, but yeah, that's quite, quite unique. <laughs> so moving into the interior, all I can say is spacious and flat. Let me explain. So normally in a car you'd have a transmission tunnel that runs from the engine straight to the back to the wheels. However, you have a centre console that can be moved, excuse my uh, diet, forward and back, which is insane. And over here, just down here, don't know how well the camera picks it up, you've got a normal socket, a three pin socket there that you could actually plug, I don't know, your coffee machine into, your laptop into, meaning when you are at a service station, while you're charging, you can be charging your laptop as well. And while we're on the topic of charging, this car can actually charge other cars. It's, it, I can see why they say it's the world's greatest. Now to go into a bit more detail about the interior, I thought I'd start off at the passenger side because obviously there's no steering wheel meaning more space. Look at the amount of adjustability you get here, meaning you get this leg rest, which is cute and cool, especially when you're at a service station, plug it in, lay back. This thing can go literally flat, but I probably won't do it because it takes quite a while for it to get back. But if I jump in here, this in fact is called the vision roof. It's a fancy word for their pan roof. It doesn't open or close, but obviously you do get some blinds. On the steering wheel, you can see you've got these four little dots, which I don't know what they mean. If anyone knows what they mean, please tell me. We've got our drive mode button just over here. And on the right, just over there, we've got our gear stalk. Moving round to the front, you can see we've got two huge 12.3 inch screens that obviously isn't touchscreen and it's controlled with this side of the steering wheel which also has the cruise control function and this one which is a touchscreen is controlled over here the response time on this is amazing the clarity is amazing and it's it's very very responsive which is what you want moving down here into the climate section if you wanted to activate your heated seats you'd have to press warmer and then on here you then have to move this up to select your heated seats. I'd much rather have a button because it just removes the confusion. You can also see here, you've got a heated steering wheel, which again, you'd have to press to activate, but I'd much rather have a button. With this being an EV, to have this on, I have to have the ignition on. And again, there's no engine to keep the battery topped up. So we're gonna have to turn it off in just a sec. But just here again, you've got physical buttons, which are great that allow you to go from the sat nav to your media, to your radio, and also to your reverse cam, which I have to say is quite cool because if you didn't fancy that, you could press that and look how cool that is. It literally shows you a 3D image off your car for when parking or maneuvering. 
So now talking about boot space, I'm going to be very honest, it is not the biggest, it's quite shallow. You also have this, which I like to use because it just gives you that bit of privacy. Oh my, I've got another one. So as I was saying, space wise, we can shove that to the rear. That's it. That's your lot. That is your lot. And for most people, it probably would be okay, but there isn't any real parcel shelf other than this privacy shelf, I want to call it, which is great, but yeah, you can kind of see what I mean. It's quite shallow and it hasn't got the height that I'd like. So you have to run this, especially if you're going to emergency break. You don't want anything from the boot flying in. Imagine that flying. Yeah, let's not even imagine. So this is going to probably be the model that you want. I'm not sure if you want the Namsang edition, but this is definitely the one to get because there are two battery options, which I haven't mentioned already. You get the 58 kilowatt or the 77 kilowatt, one being 238 and this one being 77. We get 315 miles, theoretically, from a full charge. It also has that ultra fast charging, meaning you can charge this car from 20% to 80% in just 20 minutes. So now in terms of drivetrain, in this current climate, it makes sense to make hatchbacks, crossovers, you name it, with two drivetrain options. And this definitely has it. It's got the rear wheel drive, which is this one, and it also has the all wheel drive. The rear wheel drive isn't as powerful as the all wheel drive system, but you get more miles with it being lighter. 50% battery left, performance box touch, let's go. Oh, come on, come on, come on. 50% <laughs> battery means 50% lighter, right? <laughs> 60 what do we got so looking at our numbers here you can see we've done a 0 to 30 in 3.2 seconds and 0 to 60 in 7.68 so now we're out on a drive there is loads of features on this car number one you get these widescreen tvs on the interior you get cruise control adaptive cruise control rather meaning you set a speed you set a gap and the car will do everything for you in fact you also get lane assist which is great but i have to be honest it does fight you a bit so the steering it it does it for you not on bends but on motorways if you notice there's a slight bend it will do it for you and then it will remind you to put your hands back on the wheel but the biggest thing is the stiffness it fights you i've had to turn lane assist off simply for the reason that on roads like this, you are gonna avoid potholes. And when you go to avoid a pothole, it's like, no, go back into that pothole. Don't avoid it, pop the tire. So I've had to turn it off just for that reason alone. For me, cruising around here, just in eco mode, it's very, very quiet. There's no noise coming into the cabin. Obviously, it's gonna be some form of noise, but nothing that's gonna interrupt a conversation or mean you have to shout at the top of your voice to have a conversation with somebody in the car. So while we're talking about the drive mode it's in, eco is probably where you're gonna leave this thing in day to day, simply for the reason that it reduces the amount of air con power it gives you. It, I think, coasts the car better as well. It just feels like it's the mode it needs to be in. Switching it into normal though, you get a slightly better throttle response. That's the only downside of Eco. As with any car, when you do put it in Eco, the throttle response in normal just feels like feels like you're driving a normal car. But Eco, you definitely can tell that when you, you have to like stamp the throttle more, which I believe would, in hindsight, probably use more electricity because you're gonna have to stamp the car and push the car harder as opposed to just letting it coast. So normal is probably where you'd want to put it, but most people just be like, oh, eco, yep, <laughs> more electricity saved, yep, cheers, lovely. Um, sports mode, however, press that button and... <laughs> it's, it's the sound you get along with the lack of turbo lag. Everything's instant, steering doesn't really change much, it still feels the same, and it becomes quite funny. <laughs> And if you were going to go in sports mode, the first thing you notice is that it gets to the speed limit very quickly. But then the knock on effect of that is you then realize that the chassis isn't the best. And again, if you know Hyundai, you would know also that the end range, it's, it's out of the box. It's another level. And this isn't a Hyundai Ionic 5N. It's just the Ionic 5. So if they were to do, a, I don't know, an Ionic N series, I'm sure that would have much better body control and it, it would be a hoon to drive even as an EV. But um, yeah, as soon as you put it in sports mode and you push on, yeah, it does become a bit wallowy. But other than that, in normal, probably where you'd leave it most of the time, there probably won't be much gained in between any other drive modes. Obviously, sport, you're going to use more because you're going to have more of that power. But 
other than that, it's just kick, push, kick, push. It's like you're driving a skateboard. Off you get, it rolls. On you get, it moves. While we're talking about that, you also have certain type of braking. So with the paddles, it doesn't obviously affect the gears because you haven't got a gearbox um, to say. All you have essentially is a paddle on your left, which increases the amount of braking it does when you get off the accelerator, and a paddle off on the right, which decreases it. So right now, it's in level zero, meaning if I come off, I'm coasting at 50, 49, going down. If I flick it, it goes into level one, level two, level three, and then it's in eye pedal, meaning I can essentially drive this car with just one foot, because now, if we get up to 60 and I let off, it's gonna break the car, it's breaking the car. 49, 40, 40, I'm looking at the heads up display by the way. And we're down to 33 miles an hour, simply because it's in eye pedal mode. Meaning you can just drive around with one foot. And for me, that's how you should be driving any car. And not any car, don't do it, you're gonna crash, you're gonna cat S your car. But what I'm trying to say is you should be predicting the road ahead, knowing when it changes from 60 into a 40 as we are here, and just let off. That way you save more electricity and probably in a combustion engine car, save a few pennies because predicting the road ahead is the best thing you want to do. Driving lessons, Tim Williams, 30 pound an hour. I'm not gonna obviously pass you or anything. I'm just gonna take your 30 pound. So I don't know if anyone would want to do that, but you can use the left paddle and that's gonna allow you to brake. So literally holding that left paddle brakes the car. It's, it's quite a weird gimmick, but I'd just use a brake pedal if I was you. And on touching on the brake pedal, you've also got plus and minus on the pedals here. For what reason? I don't know, probably just to remind people to press press the brake when they want to stop and not the accelerator and crash the front of their car same week they've bought it you know who I'm talking to hey <laughs> get away <laughs> but while driving this thing I've got to say comfort 100% it's got so much adjustability on the seats meaning you can have it in a fully reclined position when you're charging the only mm, issue I'd say with seating position is I feel like my bottom needs to go a bit lower and it just can't. Whether that's because they're electric seats and you've got the motors below. I've got quite long legs and quite a short torso, meaning my knees are literally about two inches away from this drive selector here. So that's my only hate about having a stalk as your gear selector. You'd have to go like that, it's a bit American. But yeah, national speed limit sign. Let's get it into sport and let's just give it a little squeeze. I love that noise, that EV noise. <laughs> so here we come, we're going up to this bend here. Bump, up, up. You can see it's a bit like you're just waiting for it to, to settle and it's, it's not very confidence inspiring, but you're not buying a car like this to take it on B-roads and smash it around every Sunday at seven o'clock. <laughs> You're looking to get this car, save pennies on the petrol, use the space that is available because it is huge. And when you're driving it around, you think you're just driving a hatchback. But when you go to park it, you realize actually this thing's quite a big boat for what it is. It's not known as a big car. But when you look at it, it's almost going into crossover territory. So as mentioned, the car out of the box, very comfortable. Suspension isn't firm at all. There are some, I don't know, EVs that I feel focus a lot on efficiency and not really comfort. And this is, this is probably one of the best EVs I've driven to be brutally honest with you. Like I said, body control, uh, it's yet to be decided whether it's a huge factor in the EV, bearing in mind you're not buying an EV for power blasts, but steering, pointy enough, spacious, tick, fun with an EV. I think they're all gonna be fun because of that instant torque. But other than that, I can actually see why they say that this car is the world's greatest EV. It's size, it's fun factor. <laughs> yeah, they could be right. They could be right. Now to conclude, Let's talk about features, best and the worst. Starting with the worst, as I've already mentioned, my kneecaps are right next to this thing and luckily they don't do anything when you're driving, even if I did flick it, it wouldn't go into sports mode and just send me down the road. But the drive stalk is just way too close. So I would probably say seating position could do with going down a tad. Best feature, it's gotta be the one foot braking. 
the, the fact that you can adjust it and the fact that it stays on. There are a few hybrids and EVs that have a similar function, but what happens is when you do set it to three or level two, when you finally brake or you come to a traffic light, it goes back into level zero, meaning you're gonna have to set it all over again. You get moving, put it back into three, you brake, it goes back to zero, but this just stays in whatever you leave it in. So it's staying in, oops, got a little duck. It's staying in level two for now. And I come off the accelerator, it brakes me for this bend. I can add a little bit of braking. And on most cars, like I said, it would probably go back to zero, but now I'm off again and I look and it's still in level two. So yeah. <laughs> the brakes feel great. It's a no-brainer. It's definitely a no-brainer. It's it's quiet. Yeah. Hyundai definitely know what they're doing. And it's not Hyundai. It's Hyundai now. That's how you have to say it. Hyundai. <laughs> and what a day. <laughs> so would I have one of these as my daily? Yes. 100% yes. Space, it does it. Like I said, the boot is a tad bit shallow, but if you factor in the fact that you've got quite good visibility out the back, you probably use a bit of that height. Rear infotainment's great. You've got two charging ports at the back. The seats can recline and decline. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. I think this is definitely on the list of top EVs that I've driven, like top, if not the toppest. EV that I've driven, <laughs> 100%. So guys, ex please excuse my voice. Like I said, I am recovering from a cold, but as usual guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please, please, please smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. God bless. Sending it. <laughs>